this section refers to terms that have to do with the costs or expenses of a business. Now, costs can be divided up into two basic categories. One of those is fixed cost. And the other is variable cost. Now, fixed costs are things like salaries, rent, utilities, um, insurance. Now, all of these things have to be paid whether or not anything is produced. So that you have to pay salaries, you have to pay rent for building, you have to pay the insurance on the building. It doesn't matter whether anything happens in that building. If you have a business, these are the costs that are fixed. Variable costs have to do with things that vary. Things like the material associated with whatever's being manufactured. Um, that could be wood, uh, plastic, nails, hinges, anything that will be a cost that will vary depending on how many items are produced. Um, also, wages. If you have someone who works at a certain wage depending on how much they produce. So these are variable costs and they vary depending on something that is produced. So let's look at a definition of what cost actually is, the way it adds these two together. We have this example about a company that manufactures staplers. And we know that one stapler costs $2 to manufacture. The fixed costs for this company are $15,000. What we want to do is find the cost function. Now, total cost, or you can just call it cost, is equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. Now, our variable cost is $2 because that's the cost for one single stapler. So my cost function, and I'll say C of Q, because Q equals the number that are produced. Q is the number of staplers. My fixed cost, it says, are 15000 plus my variable cost is $2 per stapler. So if I'm going to produce Q staplers, my variable cost is 2 times Q. And we want to find out how much the expenses are for the company to produce 2,000 staplers. So I want to find C of 2,000. So my 15,000 is a constant, plus 2 times the 2,000, that's 4,000, plus 15,000. My cost would be $19,000 to produce 2,000 staplers. Let's look at one more thing with this problem. We found out the cost to produce 2,000 staples. 
Well, suppose we don't produce anything. Suppose the number of staples, staplers that we produce is zero. 15,000 plus two times zero for Q, two zeros are zero, is 15,000. This is what we found out earlier when I said the fixed costs are the things that you have to pay even if you don't produce anything. Well, if you produce zero, you still have to pay fixed costs. So there are some terms that have meaning, but mathematically, you can see that they're also true. Let's continue with the staplers example. We found that it costs $19,000 to produce 2,000 staplers. Well, let's see on average what the cost for each stapler would be. When you average, you take your total amount and divide by the quantity. So if I take my $19,000 and divide by 2,000 staplers, this will give me the cost per stapler and 19 divided by 2 is 9.5. So it would cost $9.50 to produce one stapler. Per stapler. But the variable costs in the original problem was $2 per stapler. So you have to take into account your fixed costs when you're trying to figure what the average cost is. So $9.50 per stapler is the average cost per stapler. It's very different from the variable cost. Let's look back at what the function was. My cost function, C of Q, was 15,000 plus 2Q. That was the original cost function. My average cost function, which we sometimes call C bar for the mean, would be the total cost like the 19,000 on top, divided by the quantity, like the 2,000, would be divided by Q. So that would give us an average cost function. You can write it this way. You can also divide the Q, and you'll have 15,000 over Q plus 2Q over Q is 2. So this is another way that you will see the average cost function written. Well, let's check and see. Suppose that we didn't want to do just 2,000 staplers. Suppose that we wanted to do more. How about if we wanted to do 10,000 staplers? Let's find out what the cost per stapler would be then. Our average cost would be can't do average cost first, I have to do total cost first. Cost for 10,000 staplers would be 15,000 plus 2 times 10,000. 20,000 plus 15,000 is 35,000. So it would cost $35,000 to produce 10,000 staplers. The average cost of those 10,000 staplers, let me put that in there. Average cost of 10,000 would be the total cost, 35,000, divided by the quantity produced, 10,000, 350 per stapler. So the more you produce, up to a certain level of what the company can handle, 
does give you a smaller average cost per stapler. Now let's look at the actual definition with all the terms for average cost function, and then we'll look at a different example also. We're told that the average cost per toaster is $10 when 300 are produced. And we know that fixed cost is $1,200. Now we're looking to find a linear cost function. And we know that the standard form for a cost function is cost equal to fixed cost plus variable cost. Let's see. Average cost per toaster is $10 when 300 are produced. So I can figure out the total cost for 300 toasters. If the average cost is $10 each, to find the total cost, I'll just take my $10 each and multiply by 300. So the total cost for the 300 toasters at $10 each would be $3,000. When I talk about linear cost function, linear, then you pull out everything you know about the straight lines. And I know that in general, Y equals MX plus B is what we're interested in when we work with a straight line. So how does this relate with our cost function? Well, cost equals fixed cost plus variable cost. So cost is like Y. So that means our variable, which is generally Q for the quantity of toasters, would be X. So I could write this as C equals M Q plus B. And I need to figure out my slope M and I need to figure out B, like you do with every line. Well, how can this 300 toasters come into play here? Well, let's see. I know that my total cost is 3,000. when Q is 300. But I don't know what B is equal to. I have to figure out what I've got for B. Well, let's think about this now. Let's go back and say, how about the cost of zero? The cost at zero is always fixed cost. So if my cost at zero is 1,200, oh, and my cost at zero in general, if Q is zero, is B, then that means 1,200 is B. So continuing with a cost, Y is C is 3,000. 3, M, I don't know. X is 300, that's my Q, and B is 1,200. Well, the only thing I don't know is M, so I can solve for M. Subtract 1,200, I'll have 1,800 is equal to M times 300. So for M, I'll divide 1,800 by 300, and I'll get M equal to 6. So my cost function in general for this particular problem is C of Q is equal to 
1,200 for the fixed costs plus 6 times Q for the variable cost. So this is my total cost function. This section refers to the revenue, the income that a business generates. A product is sold and money is obtained. So if P is the selling price of an item, and Q is the quantity of items sold, then the revenue generated is price times quantity. We usually use a capital R to represent revenue equals P times Q. And notice that P is a lowercase p. Let's say that there is a company that sells radios. at $39.95 each. Find the revenue function. And find the revenue if they sell 10 radios. price multiplied by quantity, my revenue, and since I know the price, I don't know the quantity, so we'll let Q equal quantity, but the selling price we do know, so it's $39.95 times Q, and that's our revenue function. To find the revenue if they sell 10 radios, I let Q equal 10. So the company will have a revenue of $399.50 if they sell 10 radios. Well, suppose they sell nothing. Let's look at the revenue if they sell zero. Well, like here, I have $39.95 times Q, so I'll have $39.95 times zero, which is zero. So that means if you sell nothing, you make nothing. So revenue at zero is always equal to zero. You can depend on that as a constant value. Now we're going to look at another example of revenue. Now in this problem with staplers, we have that the revenue we want is $30,000. So R equals 30,000. And we want to sell 2,000 staplers. So the quantity is 2,000. And the question is, what price should be charged? Well, we know that revenue is equal to price times quantity. We have our revenue. Revenue is $30,000. we are looking for the price, so we just have P. But we know our quantity is $2,000. So to find P, we just divide $30,000 by $2,000.
so that the price they want to charge should be $15. Now, in this case, if I tried to set up the original function, because my variable here is p, this function would be written as r of p is equal to 2,000 times p. Because I know my quantity q, so my unknown is the variable. So here the variable is p. In the previous example, the variable was q. But suppose I want to find r of 0. I'd have 2,000 times 0, which is 0. So again, if you charge nothing, if you have a selling price of nothing, so you're giving things away, then you make no revenue. So whether P or Q is equal to zero, revenue at zero still brings you zero dollars in. So let's check the volume now. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Let's take another look at the company that produces mechanical pencils. The profit is equal to revenue minus cost. We found that our profit function was 2Q as pencils sold for $2 each times whatever the quantity is minus the cost function. $4,700 fixed cost minus 0.9Q for the variable cost. Make that plus 0.9Q for the variable cost. Fixed cost plus variable cost. So that our final profit equation was 1.1Q minus 4,700. Now we saw that when 3,000 units were produced, the company had a loss because 3,000 units produced and then sold was not enough to cover the cost. So they need to sell more or possibly charge more as a selling price because you don't want to have a loss in your company. You want to make a profit, positive profit, or at least break even. And if you break even, that means that you don't make any money, you don't have a profit, but at least your revenue takes account of your costs. So let's see if profit is zero, then 1.1Q minus 4,700 is equal to zero, and we'll solve and find out what quantity will let the company at least break even. Add 4,700. So Q is about 4272.72, about 4,272 pencils. Now remember, these are pencils, so we need an integer. If these were cases of pencils, we could have decimals. We could have a half a case or seven-tenths of a case, perhaps. Um, so this is the value that we've got if we want to break even. Now, there is another way to look at breaking even. We talked about how the revenue has to be big enough to take care of the costs. So when profit is zero, remember profit is revenue minus cost. If profit is zero, then we can have cost equal to revenue because then they would subtract out. So I can set revenue equal to cost. Revenue is 2Q. Cost is 4,700 plus 0.9Q. And if I subtract 0.9Q, I'll have 1.1Q equals 4,700, which gets us to the same place we have here. So there are two ways to think of breaking even. Either if you have a profit equation, set it equal to zero, or even before you get to profit, you could just set revenue equal to cost and solve it that way. Well, let's get back to this value for Q. We can't have 4,272.7 pencils. So what you want to do is to look at your rounding. You have to be very careful when you round in these problems. We could find the profit if we just chop it off, 4,272 pencils. 
So it would be 1.1 1 .1 times 4,272 minus 4,700. And the problem with this is, I multiply this out, I get 4699.2 minus 4,700. This is going to be negative. Uh, that's not big enough. This is still going to give us a little bit of a loss. Not much, but a little bit. So let's see what happens if we use a higher value, 4,273. So if I put 73 in here, when I multiply this out, it's not really a whole lot of difference, but it is bigger than 4,700. So either value probably would be acceptable, probably depending on shipping, if you have an odd number here versus an even number so many other things to consider, but for it to be a, a profit that is positive, it would have to be 4,273 pencils produced and sold. Now this is the quantity. The break-even point also has a price to go with it, but usually what we're most interested in is our break-even quantity, and that would be this number right here. It's called the break-even quantity.